Abandon all hope, you who enter here. These famous words that are sort of horrifying were written on top of the gates of hell in Dante's Inferno, right before Dante was about to enter and be introduced to all of the people who were living in hell. That is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to rid us of any hope that we might have. If you've ever read the book, Man's Search for Meaning, it's a, it's a small book by Viktor Frankl. He goes through his experience during the Holocaust. He was a Jew in a concentration camp. And one of the things that he remarks, the book is incredible, and if you have the opportunity to read it, I encourage you to do so, but it's sort of a horrifying book because he goes through human emotion and how the Nazis were able to psychologically break down these people. And he said that he always knew when someone was on the brink of death, not because of any disease or because they were being starved or anything like that. He said the Jews were able to realize when someone was going to die, it was because they had abandoned hope. Instead of going through their daily tasks, working, being forced to do it, they would lean up against a wall, smoke a cigarette, and just kind of give up. And a few days later, they were dead. Our world today really wants you to be hopeless. hopeless Hopelessness is something that seems natural in a time of so much darkness. We can compare it sort of to what it feels like to be a Steeler fan right now. Um, but I don't want to talk to you guys about that because you don't know anything about hopelessness. I'm a Carolina Panther fan, and we've been hopeless since 2015. So that's real hopelessness. But in a time of so much darkness in the world, and you can point at any aspect of the world right now, politics, our own church, who's being hurt by the hands of our own members at times. How society is trying to redefine terms that are not based in anything real. All of these things can cause us to be hopeless. Hopeless like a, a sports enthusiast who goes and pays to see his team play just to see them get pummeled and they start to leave by the fourth quarter because there's no point. Even though you spent so much effort and money to, spe to, to go and watch the team that you love, that you dedicate your time to, and you leave. Some of us have that temptation to just sort of lean up against a wall, light a cigarette, and not go through our daily tasks. But our gospel today sheds a light where there wasn't one, or where maybe the light had become a little dim. That light is shown by John the Baptist through the words of Mark. Now, if you were to present me to one of your friends, or if maybe you were trying to find out a bit more about me, you would ask Father Tom, because Father Tom and I were classmates, we're good friends, and maybe get to know him a bit more. If you were to introduce someone to Jesus Christ who had never heard the name before, how would you do it? Mark decides to lead with the Baptist. Why? Because he's writing to Roman Jews who maybe don't have that much of a connection to Galilee, to all of Jerusalem. And yet, this prophet, John the Baptist, wasn't just for the Jews, wasn't just for God's people. This is the light for everyone. This is the light that points to Christ, who is our hope. And I know that right now, for whatever reason, in the craziness of the world, it might be easier to become hopeless. John the Baptist stands as our guide, telling us to behold that there is one coming who is mightier than him. And people had seen him do pretty extraordinary things. And so we kind of have two options. We can lean up against the wall and say the world has won this. It's the fourth quarter and we're down by 40 points. Let's pack up and leave. Or we can stick around. Because this game, it's not really about us. The game has already been won by Jesus Christ. 
Woe to us if we abandon him simply because we've given up on hope. So may we pray for hope and never abandon our Lord who has never abandoned us. Amen. I was thinking to myself that Deacon Eric came here for some peace and quiet that he could study for our final exam. I'm thinking with Tom and Snowy around the dog, poor guy, he might flunk his test this week. <laughs>